In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can create effects such as bump map and displacement maps to increase the realism in your Maya renders. The basic difference between a bump map and a displacement map is that when you use a bump map, it uses the brightness values of your texture map to offset the normals to make it appear as if the surface is distorted. The difference in a displacement map is that it uses the brightness values of your texture map to actually shape the geometry and change the geo itself. So I'll show you how we can apply those effects here in Maya. So I'll start here in Maya and I've got a NURBS sphere here. And what I want to do is apply a texture map to that surface. So I'll open up my Hypershade window. And in the Hypershade I'll create a new Lambert shader. And I'm going to rename that Lambert to be Brick. And then I'll assign that shader to the piece of Geo. I'll double click that shader to open it up in the Attribute Editor. And then I'm going to assign a texture map to my color channel. So I'll click the input node next to color and choose file. And then in the file node, I'll select the image name input. And I'm going to my source images directory where I have this brick texture file. I'll assign that. And then if I hit six on the keyboard, you can see how that texture is applied to the geometry. So I'm going to make some modifications to the way this texture is oriented on the geometry. So I'll select that texture node and then I'll graph that. And I'm going to select the uh, 2D placement node and change the rotation of the texture map so that it is at 90 degrees to the geometry there. So when I type in 90, now the texture is oriented horizontally on that sphere. If I want to add a bump map to this file, I'll come in here and select the shader node. And if I double click that, that will open up here in the attribute editor. And if I scroll down to bump mapping, I can select the input node there and add a texture file to that. So I'll come in here and select a file node. And then if I select the file node that's created there, I will again select the same texture map that we used before for the color channel and apply that to my bump map as well. And if I graph that, you can see how that shader is assigned a bump map now. So there's one texture map that's creating the bump channel and the second texture map that's creating the color channel. If I come up here and render that image, we can see what that looks like. And what you can see in the render here is that the bump map has been applied successfully to the geometry, but the orientation of the texture map is not correctly aligned with the color channel. I'll go back to my Hypershade editor. And one way for me to fix this would be to select the bump maps texture placement node and change that value to match the original color channel. We rotated that to 90. In the original color channel, it's set to 90. So I could do the same here in the rotate frame, but that would mean that every time I changed one texture placement node, I'd have to change the second texture placement node as well. And rather than do double the work each time I make an adjustment, I'll show you how we can create one 2D placement texture node and share that for two different file textures. So I'll start here with my 2D placement node that is already correctly aligned. That's the color channel here. And I'm going to select just the file node itself, so that's currently highlighted. And then in my Hypershade window, if I come to the Edit menu, I can say Duplicate that. And I've got three choices. I can duplicate the entire shading network. I can duplicate just that texture node. Or I can duplicate that texture node with the connections to the other nodes in the network. So if I choose the option to duplicate with connections to network, that will create a second copy of that texture node, but both of those textures are linked to a single placement node. What I'd like to do now is to replace the texture map that's driving the bump channel with this duplicated texture file that I just created. The easiest way to make that connection is in the node editor. So I'm going to drag a pick box around the nodes that I'd like to work with, and then I can open up my node editor here in a separate panel. From the pull down menu, I'll choose Panel and Node Editor. And because I've selected those nodes in my Hypershade, if I click the Graph button here, those nodes will appear in my Node Editor. 
I'll move this view around so we can get a better look at these nodes. And if I hit this Connected Attributes Editor, it will expand those nodes to show us which nodes are connected. And then I can hit this Graph Layout button to spread those nodes out so they're easier to look at. So up top here is our current bump map texture that's driving the bump channel. And if I zoom in on that, you can see that the out alpha of the texture map is driving the bump value here. And down below is the texture map that's driving the color channel of our shader. And below that is the second copy of that texture map that we created that's not connected to anything. So if I drag that up here, what I can do is zoom in And I'll select that texture file and graph all of the uh, nodes on that channel. And I'll take the out alpha of the texture map and I'll plug that in to replace the bump map of the existing file. Now that I've done that, I can select those old texture maps and delete them because we're not using them anymore. And now if I graph that, you can see that I have one placement node that's driving two texture maps both of which are connected to the same shader. One is driving the color channel, the other one is driving the bump channel. So we can take a look at that and render that and see how that comes out. And now you can see that the bump map is properly aligned to the color channel and the both graphics are lined up in the render. The way bump maps work is that the lighter parts of the texture map push the normals forward and that the darker parts of the texture map will recede back. So it is only that black and white grayscale information that drives your bump map. What we can do with our texture map is to get more control over that. We can take it into Photoshop and manipulate that image so we get more contrast out of that texture map. So I'll show you how we can do that now. I'm going to switch over to the Finder and from my current Maya project file, I'm going to take that brick texture file and I'll copy it into a working Photoshop directory. Now that I've copied that file over, I can open that up in Photoshop. And I can start to manipulate this image in Photoshop with the goal of getting the maximum amount of grayscale information out of this texture map. So my first step is to desaturate this image and I can do that by coming up here and selecting Image, Adjustments, and Desaturate. And now we're dealing with just a grayscale image. The next thing I'd like to do is punch up the contrast so I can come up here to my adjustments menu and select on curves. And what this will allow me to do is to get more contrast out of the image. So if I bring in the edges of this curve tool, you can see I'm getting more contrast out of that. And if I want to soften the fall off, I can add a couple of more points in here just to create more of an S shape. And now we're getting a little bit more contrast out of that image. And the goal here is that the more contrast or dynamic range we get in this grayscale image, the more we can control how much the normals are pushed and pulled in our bump map. Come up here to my menu and say File, Save As. And I'm going to rename this instead of being the Color Fill channel. I'll call this Bump. and then save that as a PNG file. And now I can switch back to my Finder and copy that bump map from my Photoshop folder into my Maya source images directory. And now I can switch back into Maya and I'll open up that bump texture in my file. Here's my bump node. And if I double click that file texture driving the bump channel, I can change the path to the file. Instead of using the color fill file, now I will select the bump map that we just created. And now I can render that image to see how that looks. The other thing you'll notice in this rendered image is that the mortar is being pushed forward because it's a brighter color than the brick face. And what we can do in our hypershade is invert the uh, texture on that bump channel. So if I go back and open up my hypershade window and I graph our texture, I can double click on the bump texture node to load that into the attribute editor. And if I scroll down into the effects section and I click on invert, you'll see that the texture map is now inverted. 
so that the bricks are a lighter color than the mortar is. And now when I render that image, you'll see the mortar is receding and the brick face is being pushed forward. Now that that bump map is properly aligned, I can use my IPR render to start to control how much bump is being applied to this image. So I'll draw a pick box around the image that will refresh as I adjust the amount of bump. If I select that bump map in my attribute editor, I can move this over to the side and the value that controls how much bump we're getting here is in the color balance section. So I'll scroll down to color balance. And if I adjust the alpha gain, that will control how much bump is applied. So if I drag that down to zero, there's no bump map being applied. And if I drag it up to one, that is 100% of the bump map. So for my taste, uh, a little bit of bump map goes a long way. So I'd like to bring this down to a value of 0.1. And that's just a subtle amount of bump mapping that we're adding in there that gives us a nice little bit of texture on the surface. So we're getting some nice visual cues here on the surface of that bump map being applied. But the giveaway that we're using a bump map is that as you go around to the edge of the geometry, you can see that there is no offset between the mortar and the brick face. It's still a nice smooth edge on our sphere. And that's the limitation of a bump map. And so in order to get that change in the surface around the edge of the surface, what we need to do is actually displace the geometry. And I'll show you how we can do that by adding a displacement map to the geometry. So I'll close this IPR render and I'll bring back the hypershade. And in the hypershade, what I'd like to do is select the shader and graph the shader in the work area. And you see that reveals our shading group. If I select the shading group and double click that, I can select the tab here for the shading group in the attribute editor. And there's an input box for displacement material. If I click on the input node next to displacement material, I can go through the same process that I did to create the bump map. I'll select the file node and then in the file texture for the displacement map, I'll double click that to open that in the attribute editor and then in the input node for the image name, again, I'm going to select the bump map that we just created to drive the displacement node. So I'll click open on that. And now that we've assigned a displacement map, let's render that and see what that looks like. So from this rendered image, you can see we're getting some displacement, but we're running into the same issues we ran into with the bump map. So I'll use the same technique we did with the bump map to orient the displacement map properly on this geometry. So I'll open up the hypershade and I'm going to select our brick shader here and graph that texture in the work area. And if I go in here, I can start to uh, arrange this so we can see each of the shader nodes here. Here is our displacement map. And down here is the bump and color channel that's driving the shader. So what I'll do is I'll come in here and select the same texture map that's driving the bump channel. And with that texture node selected, I'll come up here and choose edit, duplicate with connections to network. And that gives me a second copy of that bump texture map. All I have to do now is replace this displacement texture with the duplicated bump map. So here in the work area, I'm going to shift select the three nodes that I want to work with in the node editor. And then I can open the node editor in Maya. And I'll graph those nodes and then I'll arrange these so we can see those. And then I'll lay these out so we can get a good look at those and expand those properties. So here is the alpha channel that's driving the displacement map from our current bump map. And I'm going to replace that with the alpha channel from the texture node that we duplicated. So I'll drag out the handle from the alpha channel and drop that onto the displacement. And now I can delete those textures that we no longer need. And now I can switch back to my perspective view and render that to see how that looks.
And what you'll notice is now that we duplicated that bump map and applied it to the displacement, we're getting a little bit of displacement along the edge of the sphere where you can see the silhouette of the mortar and brick face are meeting there. Not only are we getting displacement along the edge of the geometry, but the brick face itself is also being displaced because of the amount of detail in the texture map itself. So what I'd like to do now is open up that displacement texture in Photoshop and manipulate that to control how much of the geometry is being displaced. So I'll switch back here to Photoshop and I've still got my bump map texture file open here. And the goal here is that I would like to use the detail in this texture map to drive the bump channel, but I would like to use a simplified version of this texture to offset the mortar from the brick face. So I'll show you how we can simplify this texture to get a cleaner displacement map. So the first thing I'm going to do is come in here and add a filter to this texture in order to reduce the amount of detail and grain in the brick face itself. So I'm choosing noise and reduce noise. And what I can do in this dialog box to reduce the noise is set the strength to maximum and that will reduce some of the detail in the brick face. And I can adjust this slider to reduce the amount of detail that's showing up in there. So that gives us the effect of reducing the detail in the brick face itself. So I'll click OK on that. So now I've got a texture map that has a lot less detail in it, but I can go even further than that and come up and select filter, noise, and median. And this median filter will allow me to reduce the detail even further. So if I keep pushing it, you see it starts to get very blurry. So I'm only gonna add this maybe to a level of a one or two pixel radius. So let's try it with two there and I'll click OK on that. So you're seeing I'm getting a much softer version of the texture map with very little detail in it, but it's still keeping the brightness values of the grayscale of the original image. So now I can save this file and I'll name that as a displacement map in my Photoshop folder. So I'll come up here and rename this to be displacement. And then I'll click save on that. And now I can switch back to my finder and I'll copy that displacement texture from the Photoshop working directory into my source images folder for my current Maya project. And now when I switch back to Maya, I can open up the hypershade and graph that shader. And I'm going to double click on the displacement file map and open that in the attribute editor. And now all I have to do is replace the bump map with the displacement map that we just copied into that folder. So I'll select the displacement map, click open. And now that texture is being assigned to the displacement. I can come back to my perspective view and render that so we can see what that looks like. And what you're seeing here is our bump map is still providing us with some detail in the brick face, but that the displacement map is what's creating the offset between the mortar and the brick face. I'd actually like to get a little bit more displacement between the mortar and the brick face, so I'll bring back my hypershade window and double click on the displacement map and again go down to color balance where the alpha gain is what's controlling the amount of displacement. So I'll increase that to 0.5 and that should give us a little bit more displacement and now when I render this we'll take a look and see what that looks like. So now you're getting a good look at how that displacement is offsetting the brick face from the mortar but the bump map is still providing some detail in the brick face itself. So those are some of the techniques that you can use to control the amount of bump and displacement that you get when you apply those techniques to your rendered images.